So in this video, we'll be talking about uh, reinforcement of pad footings, and uh, I will be illustrating mostly the uh, rebar sets tool, although most of what I'll be showing you will also be applicable to the rebar groups and uh, the um, uh, single bar command, but the rebar set is pretty much the preferred uh, as much as possible um, a reinforcement tool because of the flexibility and the power it has. Um, so what I've got here is just a mock-up of a, a pad footing layout and I've got three types of each and maybe what I'll do since I see a question mark there I'll just go and update my numbering quickly, get rid of it. So in here you'll see that we've got pad footing one, there's three of them over there. We've got a pad footing two, which is the small ones. It's these two, yeah, and the one over there. And then we've got a pad footing three, which is the bigger ones, yeah. Now, the reason I've, I've, I've got several pad footings and of similar type is I want to illustrate uh, copying reinforcement from one typical one to another one. I also want to uh, go through the functionality of the new batch editor um, that we have in Techno Structures. So, <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so to get started, I'll just give a little bit of background. If we just uh, slip this little PDF in here quickly, and we just look at the um, mock-up that I've also got here, I've just sort of stitched a whole lot of details together here. But typically, uh, from an uh, engineering point of view, a consulting engineering point of view, the drawings will have a layout plan of the foundations. Now, also bear in mind that this is Australasia, so it's pretty much uh, the standard or the norm in Australia and New Zealand. It could be very similar in other parts of the world, but uh, I'm specifically focusing this on the Australasian environment. But um, what we have is we've got a layout of footings. We, we describe pad footing three, pad footing one, pad footing two as a type of footing rather than a footing number. So. Uh, with that, it minimizes the amount of annotations you would need on your layout. And what you can do is then include the size of the footing in a table. So if we look at pad footing uh, 3, 2, and 1, we can then go to the pad footing schedule. And in here, let me just uh, get that centered a bit. Apologize there, my PDF is uh, a bit retarded. <clears throat> If we look at this uh, schedule, basically what we do is we describe the dimensions of the footing with an A, B, and C um, value, and the reinforcement as a D, E, and F. Now, um, this tabulated uh, gives you the this tabulation gives you the information, and you'll also need a detail that tells you where they apply. So uh, this is like a standard detail sheet that will always accompany the uh, consulting engineer's drawing set where they describe the A dimension, the B dimension, and the C dimension for the concrete. And then also in terms of the reinforcement, you get your D, your E, and your F, which is your distribution. You also have in the same detail, a indicative uh, arrangement of your column starter bars. And those, the information for that you'll get from, from what we call a starter bar or a column schedule, which describes your columns, uh, which is uh, uh, um, identified down the bottom. These are your levels as you go up the building. And these little tabulations here, you'll have more information about your starter. So in this case, you have 42 N28. Um, as your main vertical bars coming out the base, you have N12s at 250, which is your ties, your stirrups or your ligatures, as they, they sometimes know it. Your concrete MPA will be uh, N80, and then your section type will be R1. Now, this section type, R1, R2, R3, uh, refers to your arrangement of the um, column uh, reinforcement within the, the concrete. So you can see for a type one, we have, uh, you know, the amount of leakages required uh, and clips uh, type two and type three. Um, so uh, that's basically just a bit of background of where the information is coming from. So, so what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna focus on just the bad footings. And then on follow up videos, we will deal with the starter cages and the columns going up. But for this video, we're dealing with pad footings. So I'll just drag that over to the side and we will um, focus on the pad footing schedule for our information. So uh, let's start up with the um, pad footing one. I think that will be a good one. So what I'll do is I'll go uh, control uh, two just to get it in a transparent mode. And um, what I'll do is I'll go to our rebar tab and in the rebar tab, I will um, engage in the crossing bars. 
Um, the second thing I'll do is make sure that I select the bar that the engineer is specifying. Now, uh, Tecla remembers, if you make any changes in this uh, property pane, Tecla remembers that. So um, if you don't, if you're not aware of what you've changed, you might carry the same setting from base to base. So be very careful and, and make sure that you've actually checked everything before you, you insert the reinforcement. But as a starter, I'll always go and uh, load my start, my, my standard file just to make sure that everything is reset to, to, to sort of out of the box default. And then I'll start changing. So the engineer is calling for pant footing one. He's calling for for um, N24 bars, he's calling for 23 in the long direction, this direction is calling for 18 in this direction, but both of them 24s, and as distribution, which is this direction, um, he's calling for 16s at 200. So what we'll do is we'll go to our uh, uh, rebar catalog, we'll engage in N24's main reinforcement. I'm gonna keep the rebars red as a class two, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my distribution from a target to a number because that's what the engineer wants. And from the 10, I'm going to change it to 23 because that's what he's calling for in the main direction. So um, once we've got those settings, what we can do is then hover over the concrete part we want to, we want to reinforce. Now, with this tool, you'll see the little uh, polygon uh, um, uh, sort of it, it shows a section through the concrete part that you're going to um, reinforce. Um, this is always perpendicular to the side you pick, so you can see how it sort of flips around if I hover over that. So this is the side that we want to reinforce. So if I click on that, Tecla uh, shows you the legs that you can reinforce. You have a bit of control in your contextual toolbar here where you can switch off all the legs uh, or you know you can select all the legs if I unselect all the legs I can also manually go and pick what I want in this case we want it like a double L shape and then this little uh, icon here shows you adjustment line so if you didn't want to cover the, the full length of the space you can click on this and drag these to different parts but in this case what we want is we want the full length so I can just say okay so at this point, after accepting that, we are still in the uh, command. As you can see, if I hover over the concrete, we still have our command active. So for, for this, for the next set, which is the, this, the, um, the second layer of reinforcement, he still wants um, N24s. I'm going to change the color just to sort of separate um, the reinforcement through a visual effect. And instead of 23 bars, he's now calling for 18 bars. So we can just type in 18 there, hover over our section, and in here, uh, again, just click the uh, three bars or three legs that we are interested in and accept that. Um, we are still in the command. And lastly, for the distribution steel, the engineer is calling for a 16 diameter. So I'll pick the 16 millimeter diameter. I will change the color to a blue for visual. And instead of having a number of bars, he's now calling for a target and the target should be 200 millimeters. Also, uh, for the start and end offset, if you leave it blank, Tecla will order calculate. Um, so let's leave it blank just to see what happens. If I now hover over that side, accept it all as a ligature because we'll break it, break them up now and say accept. You will then, if we just quit out of this command and re-pick pick those bars, you'll see what Tech has done is it's calculated a start and end offset of values uh, in the bracket as, as, as follows. And it's come up with five exact spacings of 170.7. Um, yeah, so we can control that a little bit better by overriding some of the settings by saying we want 150 as a value and 150 as a value for end and start. And if we then say modify, uh, Tecla has now come up with four uh, exact spacings at 200, so it makes a bit more sense. So, um, you know, there's a bit of, um, uh, how can I say, options to, to deviate from Tecla standard calculations. The other thing I just quickly want to discuss is the start and end offset. Um, if you look at the the um, the yellow spacing line that you see on here, you'll see there's an arrow on it. So this will be the start of the arrow and that will be the end of the arrow, which means that the 150 is applied to this cover and as well as the top. You can obviously have different values in there. If you don't see this yellow line, if you go over to the rebar tab and you hover over to visibility, you click the down arrow, it's this little guideline you see here. If I switch it off, Tecla won't show it. If I switch it on, Tecla shows it. It's also the same for all the others. 
right now that we've got that what we can do now is we can split start by splitting these distribution steels because obviously Tekla now sees this as a sort of a ligature if we just go to the one corner here and maybe it's best seen from the from the inside you can see we've got overlapping bars Tekla waiting for some form of uh, end modifier or so forth yeah but in our case that's not what we want what we want is we want to split this up into L or corner bars or uh, whatever so we'll do that so I'll click on the bar to trigger the bar and then what I'll do is I'll go over to the splitter command again in the splitter command just make sure that I load my standards to make sure that all of these are set to my out of the box defaults and then what I'll do is I will split that bar in the center also just before I split that bar these on the cont uh, contextual um, toolbar you've got the switch multi-point pick mode if you click it you've got now multi-point pick mode you've got a bar mode but you've also got a set mode now those those picking modes are also available on your ribbon over here so if you click it you get the same result so we want the picking mode that includes the whole of the set so if you look at this it will now include all of the sets so I'm just going to hover over to the sort of center of the concrete split that bar down the middle now you can see tech there's gotten rid of that uh, overlapping end there it now knows the bar is split and if I do the same on this side we now have two double L bars um, on each side, but we can't leave it there because what happens in in on site is they may have a hole in the ground, they may have formwork, and if you have a precise dimensioned bar, um, what that requires is for the formwork or the excavation to be exact. Um, that is not desirable. Normally, you give the guys on site a little bit of grace and space to work with. So what we will do is we'll split this side up into um, maybe two splitters as well. So what we can do is you've got two choices here. You can either, if you hover over the edge of the concrete, it will give you a dimension from the concrete. If you hover over the bar, it will give you a leg length. If you want so um, you know because this is just a mock-up I'm just gonna pick like 800 millimeters split it over there and on this side also just hover down until I get to 800 millimeters split it there it's the same we'll do the same on the other side obviously um, you don't have to leave it there you can um, you know this is fully um, customizable what you can do with you know once you've placed your splitters you can always click on the bar click on the splitter and you've got options here you can change it to a custom lap you can change it to a left right or middle lap you can go from parallel to top you can even stagger your lap if you want so um, you know there's a lot you can do but you have to select the line and if you select the splitter line you have to read on the top of the uh, property paint will says rebar splitter um, then you have options to change it you can also drag it left and right to 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 change its location um, the uh, once we're at this point what we can do is to uh, engage or see how we can populate the other other bases so these these two I suppose main uh, ways the one is if we um, select all the reinforcement in this base now we've got all that reinforcement selected what we can do is we can say um, right click copy special copy to another object and then what we do is we can say this is at the bottom here it says pick the source object so this is the source object and then we can say pick the destination then we can just pick that and that base and as quickly as that you've now reinforced the other bases as well um, I'll just undo that because I also want to show how the batch editor works now uh, I'll have to update my my numbering so if I go to um, uh, drawings and reports under perform numbering and number modified parts so that's updated now at this point it's given me a uh, different uh, pad footing so um, and that is because I numbered this this um, before those were updated to reinforcement so what we can do now is if we go to edit and we go to the batch editor I can pick this concrete and say select that's selecting it as a as a um, how can I say a source assembly and then what I can say is if 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 these were exactly the same mark it would have picked it up here automatically but what I can do is I can just add them as custom assemblies and I can add another one as custom assemblies and now that I've added those you can see if I click on these tabs it'll actually show you the assemblies and if I click on that it'll show you where the source assembly is and once I've got that what I can just do is say copy everything so what it will do is it, it copies 
it copies all the reinforcement from this part to those parts and then they are fully reinforced so if we then um, go to this footing again we can go to the um, drawings and reports we can go to change numbering and we can say yeah uh, uh, clear the part and assembly numbers okay and then if we just do a redraw on that you'll see it's reset that one and what we can do is we can say change the numbering of pick this part and say get the value it's zero and we can force it to one and say assign okay and if we do a renumbering now you'll see that the uh, pad footing is now back to one so these are then similar types so with that in mind what we will do is just quickly reinforce the others with a similar uh, method so for two again if we look at our um, pad footing schedule the engineer is calling for n20 bars in both directions in the one direction he wants 18 and the other direction he wants 14 and then the distribution bars are 16 at 200 again so for this one what i'm going to do is select the rebar crossing bar and i will select a 20 millimeter diameter and for the start and the end offset i'm just going to clear the fields and then just be aware with the start and end offset there's a difference between zero and a clear clear will auto calculate the zero will actually try and set it to zero so the um the distribution is by number so in the in the uh, 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 longer distance he wants 18 bars in the longer length of the bar he wants 18 bars so if we then hover over that and for this one i'm actually going to leave it as a ligature and i'm going to say okay and then for this one I'll change the color to a different color and this time the engineer wants a 14 in the other direction so we can just type a 14 in there and click that one and say accept that and then for the distribution what he wants is I'll change the color again for visual he wants a target spacing of 200 and what we can do in here again we can just add our 150 millimeters from the top and from the bottom hover over the the part and say okay and that will give us our reinforcement as such so we've got a pretty much a, a, a cage here now you can see um take this still regarding these as like ligatures so what we can do for this is we can start with the um, internal ones now this is a fairly small base so for, for this time what i'm going to do is i'm select the inner bars and I'll just move, I'll grab that line and just move it out of the midpoint a little bit. I'll go pick my, my splitter and again I'll leave my splitter to the, the middle. I'll hover over the middle of the concrete, split it there. I'll also split it in the middle here. And just to show you that you can actually copy these modifiers as well, I'll quit out of that. I'll pick the bar and I'll copy this splitter and I'll say... Um, copy special linear and I'll go from this end to that end and we've got our distance and we say copy and you can see how Tecla has, has populated this side with the splitter it's actually splitting it now now you won't see this the splitter you can actually see it's it's broken the bar but they're on top of each other it's because it's an unequal split it's got to be it's got to be equal numbers so we've got to split this side split that side which makes it equal if i split this side split that side makes it equal but we don't have one on this side so three makes it unequal so if we then take this split of this side and we say copy copy it from there to there you can now see take the fix up the overlap because now it's got equal amount of splits on the bar again it's a bit of a, a sort of a obvious thing that if you split the bar three times you know it's going to sort of come back onto itself um, if it's a leader so um, i'll do exactly the same with the um, the reinforcement uh, the blue reinforcement so what i'll do here is um, i'll go split but this time we'll split along the the um, side here and the side there and I'm also going to split this side. Uh, cancel. I'm splitting the wrong edge there. Let me just go, yeah, pick it again. Oh, I've, I've split it there. So we just need to split those two because, yeah, obviously. Now, as you can see, we've got we've got a very long length here. So if I click on the splitter, 
it says there that the standard splitting lapping length is 800 and if we look at our base if we click on our base we'll see that our base is 800 so the split the length of the split is too long so what we can do is if we click on the bar again we pick this splitter and we're holding shift we pick the other splitter we can then go to standard and change that to custom and instead of a, a 600 or 800 we can make it a, a 600 split and uh, accept that and now you can see that those are pretty much from round to round edge which is uh, sort of what what is expected from from detailing so lastly what we want to do is just split these green bars so if i go to the green bar click that and i'll leave this you see how tecla remembers the previous setting custom lap of 600 i'll leave that and what i'll do is i'll pick this side as a split and i'll also pick this side as a split now what's interesting is because those are inner inner legs you can see it looks like it extends past a little bit because they've now lost a bit of length uh, you know we've got cover plus the outer bars uh, that's creating that so what we could do is again just click this splitter and that splitter and change the 600 to say for instance a 550 lap and that sort of uh, makes it neat again now that we've got that what we can do is we can pick we can pick the uh or we can engage in our editor again so if we go edit then we go batch editor and then we go say uh, uh, add a source select a source and pick this as our source it picks that as a source and now you can see it's automatically picked up uh, uh, the other two pad footings that one and that one they're not reinforced now what we also can what i can just explain here is that there are options you know you might have things that you want to add these are exactly the same so i'm going to just keep them all checked but you you do have control about what's going to change and whatnot so um what we're going to do in this one is i'm just going to say copy the changed elements across and just like that tecla has populated the other two assemblies um, uh, with the same reinforcement and it's as quick as that so we've got our question marks again which tells us that the numbering is not up to date so if we go over to drawings and reports perform numbering number modified objects uh, they're all back to being reinforced now lastly um, this bad footing three again yeah i'm not gonna uh, i know that the engineer is calling for n32s but i'm not going to worry much too much about um uh, the number of bars uh, because I want to illustrate some other functionalities of the reinforcing tool so if I go to reinforcement I go to crossing bar I'll just reset my my defaults again so that's all out of the box settings what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a, a 32 diameter bar for a nice visual effect and then for the creation method I'm going to select uh, target spacing and I'm going to make this 400 so it's really big apart and I'm going to let Tecla calculate the end distances and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over the hover over the um, concrete shape. I'm going to pick side one and side three, so it creates like a U. And I'm going to say I'm happy with that. Uh, happy with the range as well. I'm happy with that. And then I'm also going to do the same for the other direction. And I'm going to say I'm happy with that. And then for the distribution, what I'm going to do is just make this a bit smaller. I'll make them 20s and I'll make them at, say, 300 just to have a different value. I'll uh, hover over this side and say accept. So it's added um, reinforcement for us in that. So maybe what I'll do with this one is I'll just click on that and drop. You see how take this auto-calculated auto values there. I'll type in our famous 150 top and bottom again. Say so modify and take this adjusted that a little bit. You can see it's come up with 275. So maybe uh, if we make this 400 um, and we make this 200, just try and get better increments here. Well, that doesn't really work, it seems. If we make this um, 250 centers, yep, there we go. Four at 250. Now we've got nice and round numbers. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of options, you know, obviously the spacing will be dictated by the drawing. So, um, you know, you can get clear, but I always try and have um, a nice uh, values here. So it just makes the drawing part of, of this uh, easier. It's creating drawings easier. Also, what I'll do is I'll just change quickly. I'll change the color options uh, for this and I'll change this, say, for instance, to blue. Modify so we can just see what's going on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that 
add that and, and assume there's no reinforcement in the top. So I'll go control P to just get a, a, a view from the top. So let's say, for instance, the engineer has specified on this particular base that he, he wants reinforcement at 400, but along the middle, maybe there's a section in the middle where he wants the spacing to be a, a bit uh, a, a more dense. So what we can do is if we click on the bar, we can then hover over to our ribbon uh, uh, setting settings here and say pick a property modifier we also have those available down the bottom here on our contextual toolbar we can say pick a modifier and in this modifier again just make sure that you've loaded your standards in case there's anything that you've changed that you didn't want before what we want to do is we want to change the spacing so at the moment the spacing is set at 400 but what we can do is under special, we can say modify the distribution. That's what we want to do. So we can click on modify. Yes, we want to modify the distribution. And as soon as we do that, it enables this distribution panel. And what we can do here is we can say our cremation method will be we want to change the target spacing and the target spacing we want to make our spacing. So in other words, 200. Now, before I actually apply that, if you look at this, you'll see that there's a blue line. It's going to cover the whole set. So it's a bit pointless to do that because, you know, um, you can just click on the set and change the spacing. What we want to do is just, just change certain amount of them. So again, we'll hover over to the bottom here or to the top there in the picking mode. And this time what I'll do is I'll show picking mode, which is like a polygon line. Now, if you hover over the bar, you won't get that. It's asking for a point to pick. You see at the bottom, it says, it says pick points to define the modifier. So let's start at, uh, from our grid line, three bars this way. We'll start there and we'll uh, cover the same three on the other side to there. And once we've got that, if we middle mouse click, you'll see that those bars are then changed to half the spacing of the others. And we can quit out of the command at this point. We can select the bars in the other direction, do exactly the same property modifier, make sure that our modify distribution, you see our Tekla remembers the previous setting is set to yes, and then our target spacing is 200. And what we, these are our uh, grid line, what we can do then is pick uh, two bars either side of the grid line, just for instance, and click that. And just like that, Tekla is now given us a more dense spacing along the center or maybe uh, uh, on the bottom of where the column might be. Uh, it might be a scenario that you could get in, but you still have that full set um, to your, you know, available. And you can, if you click that uh, uh, property modifier and delete it, tick, will just like that recover the previous setting. And I'll just undo that quickly because we do, do want that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at this point is I am going to do a, um, I will not update because if I update now, Tekla is gonna see this pad as different to these two and it will change this number. So what I'm gonna do is again, just go to our edit tab, engage our batch editor. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the source assembly and I'm gonna hover over this concrete and pick that. And as soon as I do that, well, I didn't pick it, did I pick that? As soon as I pick that, Tekla will automatically pick up the other two that are similar. And then what I can do is just copy the values across and Tekla will populate those as was detailed previously. And now if I, in, uh, if I um, <clears throat> execute the number modified parts, it remains as PF3. So hopefully this was helpful and, um, you know, it's an introduction to pad footings. There's a few different types and a few different splitters. Uh, with rebar sets and uh, looking forward to the next video. Thank you.